What's up guys, it's Ben. We're talking about practice. We're talking about how to get faster with your hands. And particularly, we're talking about how to use a practice pad. So, you know, these things are a great investment. They're pretty cheap. They're just a great way of focusing in on your stick control. So if you just bought one or you've had one kicking around for ages and you haven't used it, I just wanted to make a video to encourage you to go and grab that thing, dust it off, set it up, and I wanna show you how to get the most out of it. So let's get into it. First things first, you gotta set that thing up. So, you know, where you're gonna put it, I would say, best thing you can do is put it on a spare snare stand. But you know, you might not have a spare one kicking around. That's totally fine. Any flat surface will do, but you definitely wanna set it up at the right height for you. So the way I'm sat here, I'm actually on my drum stool and I've got a snare stand. This is like your ideal setup, but if I'm on tour, I'll chuck the pad anywhere. I'll stand and have it on a worktop. I'll sit and on a broken chair in the backstage and play it up here. That's not ideal. And that's kind of my point is that the height of it is important if you're gonna do some really serious work on your stick control. So you want it to be at a height where if you're sat and playing, your hands aren't like resting on your legs like that and getting in the way. So you're not like, you know, crouched over it. And also you don't want it too high so that you feel like you're having to kind of, you know, bend your wrist like that to get above it. You're not going to do any effective practice there. So the ideal position for it is obviously just in front of you uh, where the sticks kind of fall naturally in the center of the pad and the angle between them is roughly 90 degrees, you know, but you definitely don't want it to be with your hands resting on your legs or anything. And when the sticks are flat, you just want a couple of inches clearance here uh, so that when you're playing, you're not going to hit your legs. Number two, you need to use a metronome. I know it sounds boring and it's like, well, why? It's because it will just make a ridiculous difference to you as a drummer. You know, we all have an internal clock and naturally, you know, most of us don't really have like the strongest internal clock. We're not born as human metronomic robots. So actually having a metronome will train that internal clock so that when you're playing, you know, you will just become so much tighter. But when it comes to pad work, using a metronome is even more important because we're really going for like precision. We're going for those even note spacings and what we're working on. And we're building that just innate sense of time as well. Plus, if you're kind of going off on one and you're shredding or you're working on like flipping accents around, having something to keep the pulse for you is absolutely vital. So just get one of the free apps for a metronome. It doesn't have to cost you anything if you don't want it to. Get on it. So in terms of what to actually practice on the pad, I approach it pretty simply. You know, I work on fairly simple stuff if I'm sitting down to actually have a session on one, and that will be singles, doubles, paradiddles, so, you know, so like some of your basic rudiments. You know, I'll do six stroke rolls or flams as well and that kind of thing. I've actually got a video on my ultimate practice pad warm up if you wanna see the actual set of exercises that I use when I'm on tour or just on a daily basis if I wanna warm up my hands, so go check that out. But focus on the simple stuff, so singles. Work on your doubles. Work on your paradiddles, because that's singles and doubles. And really, like that's all you need to, to build a great initial workout on a pad. If every day you just sat down and worked on singles, double paradiddles, you'd be flying. My next tip is to actually use a practice pad. It's no good just having one around if you don't use it. I would say if you can split half your practice time between kit and pad, you'll get the best results, particularly if you know, you're starting out or you've been playing for sort of less than three years, definitely, because stick control is the thing that's gonna accelerate your playing so much, you know, because it's, it's just how you interface with the kit is how you actually hold and work with the sticks. So a lot of pad time is really, really important when you're starting out. So try and split your time, half between the pad, half between the kit, and you'll notice big improvements. So you've been practicing for a while, you've been working on your singles, doubles, paradiddles, your rudiments, you've got your metronome going, you're practicing every day, that's awesome. Now what you need to do is make sure that you are actually watching yourself play. You need to be looking down at your hands and saying like, right, how's my technique? Have I got tension? Do the hands match? 
does the stick height match? That's really important as well. So you're really using that time behind the pad to be micro analytical and go, yeah, is this good? Is this bad? Like, you know, how does it look? Another great thing is to film yourself from the side so you get another angle, so you particularly have your hands and your sticks, or set up a mirror so you can see as well. You just want to get really analytical and kind of geek out on how your hands are improving. So there we are. Those are my top tips on how to actually use a practice pad to improve as a drummer. If you don't already have a pad, then definitely go and invest in one. They're not very much money and it's really lifelong value for your lifetime as a drummer. So they're just an incredibly useful tool. There's loads of great ones out there. I'm using the Reflex CP1. Personally, it's the best pad I've ever played. It's amazing and uh, I can definitely recommend it, but there's tons of great ones out there. So go and get something you can afford and something you like the feel of. Thanks for watching, hope that helps. Go get some practice time. See you all soon.